we will discuss it. Okay. This week's fully charged. Okay. I really can't tell you about. That's the class in Murchite in Kuparang, sir. The class start for another. There might be only 3,000. What is it, sir? I'm going to talk to you about the gap, sir. I'm going to talk to you about the time. I'm going to talk to you about it. Oh, 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 oh. In an interview in 2017, Musk was told that electricity was becoming a luxury for some, if not for most people living in South Australia. Cost of power is making it almost a luxury item. Wow. Really? Where the electricity prices had skyrocketed. There are Australians today wondering if they can even turn on their lights. There are Australians today wondering, um, well, should we go without? some food a visibly upset musk had this to say or cut it back in 2016 the australian blackout was a large-scale power blackout that happened because of storm damage to the electricity infrastructure because of the interconnected nature of the electricity transmission network wherein the failure of one node would result in the rapid failure of the other thus a cascading failure resulted in the entire blackout in the southern central part of australia affecting as many as 850,000 families. The gale storms and lightning strikes made the already declining infrastructure of South Australia worse. Being a country which has one of the largest coal reserves and natural gas reserves, not to mention that most of the areas in Australia get an exceptional amount of sunlight, one might expect the energy prices to be cheap. 
But unfortunately, Australia has the sixth most expensive energy in the whole world. The situation has actually gone worse, where according to an Australian Competition Consumer Commission, ACCC, it was found that people paid 44% more for electricity than an average family did 10 years ago. Musk pledged that he would build a battery farm to stop the frequent outages that were happening in South Australia. He even pledged that he would deliver it for free to the South Australian government if it took more than 100 days. Today, the world's largest lithium-ion battery farm is live in South Australia and must deliver the battery farm within 63 days after signing. This ended the high price spikes, prolonged outages, and not to mention the political brawls over battery power in South Australia. 30,000 South Australian households could not get through watching one episode of Australia's Ninja Warrior with this big battery. By all means, have the world's biggest battery, have the world's biggest banana, have the world's biggest prawn. Tesla created the 100 NW battery storage farm in the Hornsdale Power Reserve, which mostly uses wind and solar power, costing Tesla about $50 million. This resulted in the network costs being slashed to around $76 million and also reduced the cost to regulate South Australia's grid by a whopping 91%. A Bloomberg financial analyst noted the effects the battery farm had, saying, not only has the Hornsdale Power Reserve identified how batteries can physically help the grid, it has also shown how they can make money along the way. Tesla said in a statement, the completion of the world's largest lithium ion battery in record time shows that a sustainable, effective energy solution is possible and hope this project provides a model for future deployments around the world. With this, Musk proved that renewable energy can be effectively stored in storage solutions and can be used in the event of failure of the large-scale network transmissions, a feature too common in tornado and other natural disaster hit areas. Tesla has been pushing its battery storage solutions and solar panels after it acquired Solar City, a venture started by Musk's cousins in June 2016 for $2.5 to $3 billion. Musk said that the reason for this is creating a seamlessly integrated Tesla battery and solar power product that looks beautiful. The merger was completed later in 2016. With the merger completion, Tesla Motors Incorporated changed its name to Tesla Incorporated. Musk is pushing hard for solar energy. He compared the sun to a nuclear fusion reactor without the nuclear waste. After acquiring Solar City, Musk announced the solar roof, which is designed to look like normal roof tiles, where the photovoltaic cells would make up the entire roof surface rather than mounting the traditional solar panels to the existing roof. The most important announcement came in the form of battery storage solutions Tesla Powerwall 2, a home battery product that was introduced to store the surplus power either from the tiles, solar panels, or from the grid. As of 2020, Tesla is still tinkering with the product three years after announcing the concept, having done trial installations with two different iterations so far. There's something of a work still in progress. Despite being announced three years back, Tesla still hasn't performed many actual installations of its solar roof. During an annual shareholder meeting, Musk said that the third iteration of the tile was being worked on. Musk is pushing hard for solar energy as a means to replace traditional coal power plants, which remains largely active in energy-hungry countries like India and China, and nuclear power plants. The latter produces large amounts of nuclear waste that remains radioactive for decades. Not only Musk, even countries whose entire economy traditionally revolved around crude oil and petroleum products are now pushing for renewable energy. Petroleum exporting countries, which came after the discovery of vast reserves of crude oil and natural gases, are now steadily diversifying their economy. Saudi Arabia, where the annual rainfall average is just around 400 millimeters and petroleum products contributing to 60% of GDP, has begun investing in renewable energy. Meanwhile, two giants, India and China, who still operate coal power plants for their power-hungry economy, have shown one of the largest solar power farms in the world. Kamuthi, Tamil Nadu in India, the southernmost state, has a power capacity of over 648 megawatts. It covers almost an area of 10 square kilometers. It was the largest solar power plant in 2016, 
comprised of more than 2.5 million individual solar modules at a cost of 679 million US dollars. This power plant now produces enough electricity to power 150,000 homes in India. Both the governments of India, 4.9 million barrels a day, and China, 13.5 million barrels a day, which together consume about 18.4 million barrels a day, still do not even come close to the United States, despite having one eighth the combined population of India and China consumes around 20 million barrels a day. The demands for petroleum in the developing nations continue to increase, while India is slated to overtake China in the consumption of petroleum by 2025. Though reality may seem grim, many countries are steadily moving on to renewable energy with governments giving its citizens tax breaks and incentives to move on to renewable energy. Countries like Iceland became the first ever country to completely move on to a renewable form of energy, becoming the largest clean energy producer per capita. Germany, India, Ireland, Israel, and the Netherlands have announced plans to ban fossil fuel cars starting in 2030. Britain, France, Taiwan, and California will ban them in 2040, and Norway in 2025. Tesla continues to expand in the renewable energy sector as well as the electric car manufacturing sector. Tesla will continue to play a pivotal role in the coming decades to wean people off of non-renewable energy resources. You can do your bit too to prevent climate change in our lifetime. Simple things like turning off lights, fans, etc. saves a lot of unnecessary power consumption. Before I end this video, I just want to share this quick story. When I was in eighth grade and was studying for my EV, environmental exam, I read a lot of things about saving energy, energy consumption, etc. But what stuck with me to this day was this one line which read, energy saved is energy produced. So we'll leave it right here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to hit that like button and do subscribe for more awesome content. See you guys next time. Thank you for watching team. So we uh, can see that uh, uh, there are a lot of changes going around the world and we could see that more investors are also coming behind us, uh, working with uh, uh, the energy. So the energy, what we have, I could see all the energies uh, with uh, all such kids uh, who have joined the internship. So the energy produced is equivalent to energy conserved. So that is a uh, two units of energy produced equal to one unit of energy conserved. So that is the objective that we are working on. So you could see that a uh, uh, lot many changes around the world, uh, which is not been captured, but still you people have engaged uh, with a lot many WhatsApps and uh, Facebook links, but uh, uh, content driven uh, uh, internship is very much important. So that's how we have taken this opportunity to give back to you people. So this is one such opportunity and uh, we just want to connect uh, everyone in this area. So working towards this common goal. So we are into this energy forum and we just want to have you people having an idea to innovate something to the world. So that is very much important. When uh, such innovation need to come, we need to know such fundamentals. That is very much important. Not seeing the video or by uh, going through a lot many technologies we are going to bind with the system means uh, we could have n number of innovations right away we don't have any such products in india obviously speaking for more than 50 years of time period we could see that uh, no such things are coming up so we need to have you people into the forum so that uh, you could see that a uh, lot many uh, innovations are coming up so how many people are accepting this so i would just really contribute for the society sir i'm having my innovations and i want to share to you so how many people are there you can just put it in the chat how many people at least uh, wish to do that one Yes, Sivapriya, the first. So hats off to Sivapriya, then Manigand Prabhu, great. Then, yes, Purnima, Preet Kumar, 
Yes, wonderful. So everyone is looking at a perspective that I just want to give back to the society whatever I have learned and uh, I would be giving to my own country. It's my pride of India that uh, I need to make my own product not dependent on other countries. So as, I, as people could see that uh, both India and uh, China, so like uh, uh, combinedly also they could not go with the conception of the America but we are giving more such things to global warming means uh, we are the sufferers. So we people could not afford to even build a house right away. But uh, we could see that uh, the engineering platform is growing like anything. But uh, uh, whenever there is even yesterday, Bihar and uh, Orissa, there were uh, uh, tropical rains which devastated everything. And we could see that uh, the lightning and uh, other thunderstorms have uh, killed more than 150 people. So, so that is so pathetic. So we just want to make the world so such an environment that uh, all this engineering is not to bring laurels to us alone. So we need to give back to the society. That is the objective we have taken. Arsago Solutions, IEIT, VLC, and uh, uh, Green 9, and all such forums are working towards this particular goal only. So we will just pull up all such people's uh, like-minded people to bring a change to this world. So today we have such an eminent person today. So he is going to throw a light on how things are going to be uh, driven by a uh, low dispatch center. So low dispatch center is a place where uh, uh, every individual is going to contribute for the proper running of an industry. So industry is not an easy joke that uh, one or two people working. So it is something like uh, uh, more than uh, uh, the Tamil Nadu entire population comprises of uh, seven crore people means uh, uh, we have more than one crore people electrified or two crore people electrified means uh, all the two crore people need to be satisfied with the fullest uh, with the, all this connectivity. So that means that uh, the electrical hub, which is having interconnections of uh, starting from the range of uh, 230 volt, 400 volt, or 415 volt, so whatever may be the low voltages, uh, so up to 11 kV, and then 33 kV, 66 kV, uh, then uh, 230, 400, 765, 1000, or 1300 kV. These many voltages are available. But still, we need to form a grid to uh, transfer the uh, voltage back to a village or a hut service where uh, the individual who is having a lamp, at least he need to enjoy that one. So that is the important, not that we driven more industries, uh, the very much important is that uh, a hut service who is having a lamp for his own survival, he need to have this power. So that is very much important. How this is being controlled? So do we have people to see that one? No, we don't have any visualization of low dispatch center, but still we need to know what is at least what people are doing there. So we have such an opportunity to visualize how things are being done in a low dispatch center with the uh, eminent persons uh, engineer uh, Sindhil Kumar, so who is here to uh, give us an insight of what is a low dispatch center. So you would take up the sessions before that uh, I uh, uh, have the privilege to uh, introduce uh, Mr. Sen uh, Engineer Sendil Kumar, to who has more than 20 years of experience in electrical sector. So he has a very vast experience in load dispatch center with the main load dispatch center, as well as the uh, subload uh, dispatch centers, uh, both available in Erode and uh, uh, Chennai. So he is also working as an uh, uh, ATC, uh, uh, that is the ATC manager who is looking after of available transfer capabilities that is very much important for laying a, a cable or a transmission line. So uh, he just uh, throw lights on transmission as well as the distribution, how things are being worked in a low dispatch center. I don't want to uh, put you and uh, uh, Sindhil Kumar far apart. So uh, the session is yours, Sindhil Kumar, sir. You can take up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Balamuruganji. Thank you. Sendil? Yes, 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 yes. Are you there? Ah, yes. Okay. Is now it video okay? Uh, presentation? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, it is visible. Yes. Ah, visible? Ah, okay. Okay, right, right, right. Okay. Very good morning to all, everyone. Sendil, sir, so yes, we sir. cannot hear you. So could you please be 
make that your mic and other things are okay so we could not uh, uh, we could visualize your ppt but we could not hear you uh, sir now you here ha hello good evening uh, good morning good morning to all no it's here? not audible not audible okay one minute uh good morning to all Sorry. and now it okay ji hello ji now now it okay hello ji now it is okay now you hear ji hello ji now you hear ah uh, yes sir it's audible sir ah uh, okay right right thank you thank you thank you Uh, very, very good morning to all. Today we are going to pr present that real time grid operation and management. Regarding at that, our, our dear friend Balam Murugan has uh, explained lot of things and they had explained uh, lot of information about me. And thanks Balam Murugan. He is one of my best friend and he is only uh, uh, introduced in the media side and how to and how to introduce all those things in the real time grid operation management. Also give me a lot of things and thanks. And uh, Ijan, on behalf of Ijan, also I want to thanks to them. And IEA TVLC, I am also one of the part of the uh, member in the IEA TVLC. And right now I am going to present in that real time grid operation management. Before on that, I want to introduce myself. I am Sandeep Kumar, working as assistant executive engineer in State Load Dispatch Centre, Tran Transco, past few nineteen years. And uh, before on that, the hydro experience also twenty five years over. And I completed my graduate degree in Anna um, Malai University and post graduate degree in Anna uh, University. Now I am pursuing the research uh, PhD in Anna uh, University. And thanks so for the information. And then uh, now I am going to the subject real time grid operation management and the interaction section. We have to uh, in between the class I have to start that. Okay. First we have to real time grid operation management. Before on that, what is the power? Power. The electricity is the most important infrastructure input in the development and growth of economy. Is the main part. And then consumption of electricity important index of advancement of the country and standard of living. In the economic part, electricity is the main part, and the growth rate is most important. In every year we have the growth rate is also four to five percent is on the sustained basis, and it will go some 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 basis go eight to nine percent. But right now is the four to five percent is only depending upon the demand basis, and for us to catch up the rest of the world. And then power system. What are the power system components? Everybody there, however, are not just we have to brief about that. In generation side, is the generating power plant is lot of generating power plants of fuel types are there. That also next slide is coming. And then power transmission sector side is eleven kV side, twenty two kV, thirty three kV, sixty six kV, one ten kV, two thirty kV, four hundred kV, and then. Sound sixty five kV, thousand two hundred kV, and HV diesel line also. HV diesel also VSC based voltage source converter and current source converter. Two different converter types also there. And then uh, residential and then uh, distribution sector side. Distribution sector is a eleven kV, twenty kV, thirty three kV side. That is the commercial. Sector and urban sector, agriculture sector, residential sector, and domestic sectors. All those sectors are there. So we are also everything we are going to uh, manage. How we are going to manage that thing? Only we are going to uh, deliver on this structure. Uh, what are the thing? How to manage that? We are going to the load dispatch center has to manage the transmission sector side and the generation. Generation sector side and discom side. The, the power supply and demand. We have to mutually. We have to manage balancing. Balancing mechanism is a must that we are going to manage in proper manner. Okay, and then brief about that. An analogy: power system versus human body. Now, my human body is also one of the power system. How the load dispatch center is the brain, and the sub transmission is the sub arteries, and the distribution is the capillaries. Well, heart. Heart is the main. That is the generation, and the transmission is the main arteries. So these are our power system. In power system, we say easily we have to identify that heart is our generation part, brain is our load dispatch center. That is our That is a load dispatcher. Is a five four different is that will be uh, elaborately on next slides also. And the sub arteries are the sub transmission and capillaries are distributions and main arteries is a transmission sector. These are all the important. And the next the generation and the pressure in real time blood pressure blood pressure what is blood pressure? blood pressure in human body system is a must. We are going to measure the blood pressure one twenty eighty in power system the voltage of different types of voltage is there. We have to maintain that voltage range is a plus or minus five percentage only. We are going to manage and then. 
plus or minus 3 percentage only in the heart beat heart beat is also must we are going to manage the free, our heart beat is 72 beats per pulse that is all heart beat if heart beat is not there means so our entire our, we are going to dead so power in power system frequency also main uh, how we are going to maintain the frequency frequency is maintained with the uh, balancing with the frequency demand under the supply okay the pulse in human body system 72 beats per minute in power system 50 cycles per seconds okay what's the cause what are the causes in the human body stress anxiety power system what's the cause Ge load generation mismatch that is all. that's only we are going to manage in the real time grid operation risk in the human body heartbeat deviation in case of the heartbeat is going to be higher 90 120 is going to be high bp we are going to manage in case of the heartbeat is going to be reduced low bp problem is there in the same condition in the power system frequency deviation frequency high 50 actually we are we are going to maintain 50 cycles in india uh, suppose in case of frequency 48 or 49 it is a low frequency 51 52 is going to be high frequency same thing high bp low bp it is a high frequency low frequency so everything the in human body system is also nothing but the power system same thing we are going to manage sir so we have to easily collect this thing voltage frequency 50 cycles and load generation mismatch and frequency deviation these are all the main aspect of the load generation management load display center work has to carry out the these things this five uh, five things are the main activities in the sector and then what are the types of fuels are going to be produced in the generation part thermal power plant hydro power plant nuclear power plant diesel power plant gas power plant combined cycle power plant combined cycle power plant is nothing but the gas uh, diesel power plant with steam uh, and uh, naphtha gas gas power plant with the uh, steam we are going to the combined cycle power plant and solar tidal wind geothermal biomass and fuel cells these are the types are the generation types okay generation plant types and these are the just brief of the first one is the hydro power plant and the thermal power plant and the, this is the distribution sector side and then transmission sector side and the solar and uh, solar and the wind generations everything so there is a figure sir okay what are uh, just before brief about that energy resources in india what are the energy sources where it is available just brief about that the natural resources of the energy in india are dispersed in concentrated in a few packets only mainly the hydro resources are available in the in the northern region and northeastern region only having the more hydro resources in uh, coal and lignite sources are more available in the eastern region only Eastern region, the Chhattisgarh area, and that there is a Salchar and the valley. So many valleys are there. In this area, only is the more uh, coal sector is there. Right now, there is a in India has considered as a five uh, differentiated the five in different regions: Eastern region, Western region, Southern region, Northern region, Northeastern region. The five different regions are there. So are interconnected with the so other states also. Bhutan and the Nepal is also we are connected with the regions. Bhutan also other states, we have connected with the regions. Here is also more or, uh, hydro sources. Okay. And the next, and the development of electricity in the industry in the last 50 years, the India has here mainly developed through state controlled instruments in until 1975, developed mainly through SEBs, electricity department controlled by the respective state governments. Before 90, 50 years before, we have only really localized generating the power produced and supplied through the localized network only. And then step to the state district network and then state. And the state connected to the regional, regional to and then all India from the from the power sector is also uh, true entire India has considered one grid one nation for when when it is formed the one grid one nation before uh, before one grid nation how the grid operated grid operated that is also we see the next slides uh, before in 1975, the electricity was amended for the NTPC and the national hydro power stations also intervention started by felt in the early 80s only Okay, well, how the evolution, just be 1950s localized grid and 1960s state grid, 1970s regional grid, 1990s national grid on asynchronous mode and synchronous mode. In 2013 onwards only, asynchronous uh, become synchronous mode. So one new from news. Now, new is the north, east, western region is connected with the one single region that is a, a northeast region, north, new and yes is separately asynchronous mode. On, on 2013 onwards, news. North, east, west region, that is a news only from 2013 onwards. And then how the demand side management with the economically we have to manage and maintain. That things are also we are going to, next slide we are going to go there. And, and today we are going to real time management with the Grid operation manager, energy management system director. What are the things are going to manage? What are the things are going to monitor? What are the things are going to calculate? How we are going to operate? 
how are going to manage the condition real time renewable energy sectors on one side we are going to manage and the energy storage system we are going to implement and uh, and then uh, to energy market and weather climatic conditions we are going to manage and home sector smart home system we are going to implement and conventional energy sources we are going to manage these are the everything the electric vehicles in future we are going to implement lot of electric vehicles are also going to implement on the time how we are going to manage how we are going to implement that things that is a uh, electric vehicles and then data monitoring and data analysis why what purpose we are going to data analysis uh, tomorrow what the demand we recommend we don't know how we are going to calculate be compared with the previous day previous month previous year and the past 10 years how the demand is growing we are going to calculate in different methodologies there or to uh, unit commitment method and artificial intelligence method and so many methods are there so that method we are going to calculate and arrive the what is our the recommend on next day forthcoming day next tomorrow and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and the next week what the demand uh, based on that only we are going to calculate that everything has to calculate by the central controller that is a load dispatch center and the forecasting what are the types of forecast forecast is a wind forecasting is record and solar forecasting is also record and the demand forecasting also record in agriculture based demand also industrial perspective also is also record so everything we are going to calculate we are going to calculate and optimize our the demand forecasting technology based on the demand for, for weather forecasting and only the, the demand has to variation is there based on the demand variation we have to generate and supply going to be managed with the load dispatch center work and then next one thing Uh, okay and before that focal point of the indian power sector what is the power sector how we are going to the manage in the norm, general norms the policy market ma making is also done by the central government that is a ministry of power and then under the control of central uh, central government control of working central electricity authority and the state government also electrical separate division is there and the regulator central electricity regulatory commission and the regulatory side and then state regulatory commission is also there the central electricity regulation gives the norms for the entire india and the entire nation of the uh, india country and the state electricity regulatory commission has to carry out the work of the open access supplier intra state apt implementation and then renewable sector side and a lot of acts acts and regulations has to based on the central regulatory state regulatory has issued the order to state uh, state discoms they have to manage and they have to operate and then system operator side what are the load dispatch centers national load dispatch center regional load dispatch center and then state load dispatch center is there state in state sector as a, every state sector having the one load dispatch center is there and sub load dispatch center is also there in generation sector side we have central generating station state generating stations and the private sector players private sector players have different fuel sectors also the private sector coal coal sector and lignite sector gas stations and wind solar so many players are there in that in state generated side also generate hydro thermal gas and so many fuel sir and central generation shared about depending upon that population they have to allocate the share to the region wise state wise tamil nadu sector is kerala and karnataka andhra and telangana these are all the generation sector transmission central transmission utility state transmission utility and private sector players are also there in the central transmission is constructed above 400 kv lines only and state transmission uh, below 400 kv lines now it start the state utility is also started the above 400 kv lines 760 kv lines also now first tamil nadu is also first going, going to start that 760 kv transmission lines and the private sector players are also going to start that constructed the 480 kv lines and 760 kv lines and 110 kv lines also constructed in distribution sectors are the two types are there state sector and distribution sector is there no central sector this side you know distribution sector only only state sector and distribution uh, private sector only right now is there future will coming around area wise and district sector is also we are going to establish in market market what purpose is going to market in same uh, right now is the share market is also uh, everyone has our about that i think share market in based on that share market like that power market is also there suppose if i am i am in city i am right now in chennai i want power from procurement from that jammu kashmir is it possible to power procurement from the uh, jammu kashmir yes it is possible how through power exchange we are going to able to purchase the power so i am my, my industry is in salem so my, my one more power industry is at jammu kashmir or northern region so is it possible to yes it is 
is possible how we are going to possible to procure the power through the power exchanges and bilateral power exchange another thing bilateral power exchange what is that suppose in one power plant is located in our state we have to procure the power through mutual agreement with the bilateral so i have to I, uh, on based on my requirement they have to allocate on the agreement based on the agreement and then just move to the power supply position before on the every 10 years once we have to calculate the growth rate 2000 uh, 2010 we have to pro propose the one electricity demand and projects and they are calculated 2011 to 12 extra 1031 1097 with the demand growth rate. on that time the electricity electricity demand record that, that is a um, per capita consumption the 1031 and then they are calculating 2021 the 1038 is our per capita consumption but uh, the gdp growth on, on the time there is a demand requirement that is installed capacity uh, 2011 2 lakhs 6757 megawatt is there and the 2021 to 22 requirement is 3 lakhs 68592 sound percentage growth 8% growth means 4 lakhs 24000 sound 44 megawatt previous 10 years before they are calculating they have to uh, declare this growth rate demand projections rate from by central electricity authority and the ministry of power and the 2026 sound is a 4 uh, 4 lakhs 80000 sound percent growth means 8 percent growth 5 lakhs 74000 2030 31 so 6 lakhs 27000 and 8 percent demand growth is a 7 lakhs 78000 okay and now what the install capacity present in coal sector and then Uh, lignite diesel nuclear hydro and others others nothing but the renewable resources solar wind biopower and small hydro is also there coal sector is a 198525 that is a participate about 53.6 percentage participate in the coal sector side that is a conventional generation only is the base load at the now state and 23.6 percent is the renewable source renewable energy source sector side is a one third of that generation requirement our installed capacity now it is reached what's our demand requirement next slide we have to see that in all india installed capacity scenario that is a three Lakhs seventy thousand three forty eight megawatt. That is a three seventy gigawatts of India, and out of three seventy gigawatts, eighty seven gigawatts of the renewable sector side is the twenty four percentage of the total installed capacity or e power. In Tamil Nadu perspective, thirty two thousand forty two megawatt over our total installed capacity. Out of thirty two installed capacity, thirteen. Thousand three fifty five megawatt RE power sector side. Our demand Tamil Nadu out of that forty one percentage RE penetration is there in Tamil Nadu. In compared with that throughout India, fifty percentage participation in the total RE installed capacity of the India. Okay. In Tamil Nadu perspective, we have the installed capacity. Tamil Nadu one generation is around nine thousand megawatt is there, and central generating share perspective six thousand two hundred megawatt, and purchase also three thousand six hundred megawatt. And then renewable energy source sector side the participation is thirteen thousand three fifty five megawatt. When wind perspective participation is twenty seven percent, and solar side is at twelve percent. Yet to be we reach the more than that. And what the growth in the conventional part? Conventional part is uh, from two thousand sixteen to for past five years, the demand growth in the India is uh, almost uh, to one lakh eighty thousand to one lakh ninety eight thousand reached. Actually, two two lakhs five lakhs thousand two lakhs five thousand megawatt is reached. And the gas station is stable, sustained in that limit, and the diesel is also sustained in that limit. And uh, non-conventional part is the uh, enormous growth in the solar perspective only, and uh, wind also in parallel growth. Why it is growth this much? Because as per the Central Electricity Authority and the Minister, Central Government, the Prime Minister has initiated more renewable want to install. That's why we are going to installing and commissioning that RE power. That is a wind power and solar power. This is a conventional utilization that the generation conventional EMU thermal power perspective and then hydro perspective and nuclear and. Her Bhutan, Bhutan also somewhat imported the power from that to India. Conventional MUs that is also reached to ninety thousand MU to, and then one lakh ten to one lakh one lakh five thousand MU is the utilized in the in the conventional part. And non-wind conventional part is the hydro is the major part, and then uh, wind and solar is uh, gradually increasing. Uh, out of that, our uh, total that the consumption three thousand six hundred MU for the month means our uh, conventional non-conventional part is a twenty-five percent it reached right now. 
unconventional or non-conventional, but compared to that previous five years, it grows enormously, almost over 80,000 to 1 lakh 30, 40,000 it's reached. In conventional MU also, uh, is to com compared to that conventional MU, non-conventional MU is lesser. Why it is less compared to that? Because internal capacity is so 25 percent it is reached, but is conventional generation MU. This the conventional part is a hydro and wind is also wind and solar is here not a continuous 24 hours they are not uh, generated. They are generating it is a seasonal basis only. In solar generation available period is only daytime, six hours only. Morning seven to uh, seven o'clock they started and four to four o'clock it will be drop down that solar generation. In wind generation is available in the during the seasonal period only. May month to September month only the solar generation only. So seasonal availability and that solar generation. That's only we are utilizing fully, 100% uh, utilized the renewable sector in the throughout India. In, what are the parts of the, where, where the renewable, more renewable available in India, India, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra, Telangana, Gujarat and Maharashtra is having the more renewable sector installed the capacity. And just we go there, how the demand varies from that, uh, from demand varies from the state to state and what's the demand during the, uh, before the pandemic period, COVID period and after the COVID period. But right now, now, now even the COVID period is there. Before starting the COVID period, our demand is around 1,57,480 megawatt. Now, uh, after the COVID period started from 15th March onwards, onwards it reduced to demand, our reduced demand to 110,000 demand megawatt. The variation is around 40,000 megawatt. That is a 400 gigawatts. You have to reduce our uh, demand, dropped, dropped that demand. March month. In April month, enormously grow the demand is also maintain that one lakh to ten thousand to it some, some relaxation give to that the lockdown it grow reached to one lakh thirty thousand demand these are the my demand crash and uh, during the covid period normally in the summer period the demand is going to reach the one lakh seventy thousand uh, megawatt seventy to one lakh eighty thousand megawatt but right now is our demand is around one lakh thirty thousand to forty thousand megawatt is only is there it will be due to covid period because lot of industries and commercial sectors are under lockdown condition they are not so that's why only very less generation uh, less demand is there wind perspective is also compared with our uh, previous year and this year the wind generation megawatt is also previous year is a 3422 megawatt is uh, utilized and this year 3020 megawatt only is there Per day, MU per day, per day MU is here. Previous year is a 114 MU wind generation is there. Right now, this year, 1011 MU is there. And solar generation only enormous growth compared with the previous year. Last year, so 135 MU. Uh, this year is a 1 lakh, uh, sorry, 159 MU. That is almost increased up to 17.52 percent compared to the April 19. And uh, increased by the previous month is a for 1 percentage solar generation MU. And megawatt is also solar generation is also de uh, decreased with that pre previous month. Uh, previous month is over 2.69 percent is a decrease and increased by the compared to the previous uh, so 18 percentage. And before that, we have to the pan how the grid operated during that pandemic situation in that India. Uh, what are the important events in the India grid operation after COVID-19 pandemic period? Uh, Honorable Prime Minister is in the, uh, announced that uh, Janada Kurfe on 22nd March 2020. And then complete lockdown commenced on 25th March to uh, 3rd May and then continued up to if June 30 also. And the 5th of April 2020, the Pan India light switch off uh, 9 minutes and uh, at 9 p.m. 9 minutes. That is a major event on the day. And the first time you are facing that complete entire India lockdown on 22nd March and then after 25th March. How the load variation, how the demand variation, we have to just be the next screen. The demand variation. Before 15th March 2020, the demand is going to be higher side. Our uh, consumption is record 3,339 gigawatts. But uh, on 22nd March, uh, during the Janada Kurfe day, 3, 300 gigawatts power demand crashed. Why? Because a lot of indices and commercial sectors are lo under lockdown. Indices also locked down. So that's why. After mm, on that second, 22nd March, on the Janada Kurfe, just to region wise, we have to uh, just look at that. 
15th of March is our demand is around the northern region, southern region. Region wise, you have to, I have to mention here. In north region, 774 uh, MU gigawatt hour and reduced to 739. In western region, 1100 gigawatt and reduced to 977. So totally 150 gigawatts hour reduced. In southern region itself, 1061 gigawatt hour reduced to 965. This is around 35 and 100 gigawatt hour. In eastern region is only meager only because due to the eastern region is also only the power production is more power production. The industry sector is more on other side. Northern region and the southern region only having the more industry sector. Now northeastern region is a 39.8 to 3.1, uh, 35.1. Four gigawatt only is the difference is there. Less industry is there. In northern region is also uh, very less only compared to the other regions. So totally 300 gigawatts and peak demand suppressed around 20 gigawatts power. On 25th March to 14th April 2020, extended to 30th June 2020, complete and partial India lockdown, impact on Indian grid operation. How the drop, what the peak demand drops? by 19%. From this figure, we have noted that, notice that from Feb 1st of February, our demand is around 1,50,000, 55,000 is there. Now it is reached to, from June, now it is reached, our demand is, only, now it only reached the 1 lakh, near to 1,50,000, 50,000. 50, and uh, during the March period, our demand is reached around 1,10,000 megawatt. So how much variation? 40,000 megawatt variations and the demand drops by the 19 percentage due to industrial perspective and the commercial perspective only. We, we are locked during the lockdown, the demand crashed. During the, how the grid operators has to manage? Due to high variation is there. So how are the grid operator? Compared to the previous year, there is a huge variation. How the grid operators has to maintain during the high variation in the con uh, demand crash? how to manage in this condition what are the problems are faced by the system operators that also screen uh, next screen we have to see that and then before and that pack complete the pan india light -like switch off event on the 9 pm and the 9 mains impact on the grid operation on the time actual all your demand during the switch off event we are calculating uh, that is the total reduction is on the time date 1 lakh 20 thousand demand is there uh, 1 lakh 12,000 demand is there on the time the nine minutes at the nine, 9 p.m. at 9 p.m. on 5th of May we have re load crashes around 31,089 megawatt the total reduction in all India demand record during the event was 31,089 megawatt it is actually preliminary we are going to calculate and we are working out around we are expecting 15,000 megawatt only but unnecessarily on the day the load crash uh, dropped to 31,089 megawatt but uh, but we are going to manage in successfully with the smooth in a smooth manner with the help of the national load display center and southern region load display center and state load display center everybody has coordinated in a, in a smooth manner and a successful manner suppose during uh, everybody is asking and in, the, in this perspective asking some questions also Sir, how the, the 31,000 megawatt demand grass, how the grid uh, act? What, what what are the problems are faced on the time? Yes, there are a lot of problems are uh, coming, but we are successfully, we are going to manage. Preliminary, we are get, going to take a lot of action. How we are going to, what are the actions we are going to take? We are going to take controlling the voltage, we are controlling the frequency, we are controlling the generation and demand based on the demand you have to maintain the generation suppose demand uh, suddenly crashed and uh, before on that we are going to reduce our conventional generation and by uh, quick pick up the hydro generation reserve power reserve powers are generation uh, hydro power and gas uh, the gas power plant they are going to maintain and nuclear power also fully we are going to maintain that generation any questions uh, this is uh, the, in this perspective all India demand during switch off event. Anybody's any questions on other side? Anyone having any doubt on this thing? Dear students.
Okay, shall I go next slide? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay. Okay. okay ma, I will go to the next slide. Okay. And what are the challenges faced on that post lockdown on the time load generation balance assessment, peak season declaration, and back backlog of the planned outages and the transmission line fall? These are the main things. Everything they are going to manage by the load dispatch center. So load dis what are uh, what the load dispatch center's perspective? What are the works are carried out? Load generation balance is the main perspective, and the peak season uh, declaration is uh, main. And then backlog of the planned outages. We are going to already we are going to plan the outages uh, outages of the generating plant that you are going. To not able to take the time, uh, not able to uh, maintain their system. But we are going to manage in the whatever the available with the generating is also fully. That is also there are challenges in forecasting and lockdown releasing may be in the different stages for different states. Loads so will depend on the economy, recovery in time scales of the month to years, and solar and wind expected to pick up on that period. That will April to uh, that uh, June month. That is sir. Uh, yeah. April to September, the solar generation going to pick up, so the wind generation going to pick up, and the solar generation during the daytime only available, and the high solar generation on that summer period, April to and July month, and the peak season is a peak season availing the outage may reduce the declared capacity. On the time also we have to reduce that, uh, reduce the reduce our outage plan, and we have to generate the more power and maintain with the limit, and on that period we have to utilize the. Renewable power, more renewable power on the time, and the plant is also postponed on the time. And the transmission line falls, or in case of any transmission line falls, immediately our uh, teams, uh, teams are going to ready to go, going to immediately going to attend and recover that uh, immediately restore the system within a short period. During the high temperature and the low clearance, also vegetation trimming, lot of things are there on the time. Our persons are also uh, efficiently; they have to manage on that time. In this perspective, what are the lessons you are going to le learn from that uh, COVID period to the power sectors also? Maintaining the system continuity uh, during the worst condition, we are going to able to manage and strengthen the system level flexibility and adaptability, adaptability through the adaptive tools and. Technology to support and enable effective response in dealing with the uncertainty conditions. Uncertainty conditions, natural calamity. Also, line breakdown on generator outage. These conditions are also we are going to efficiently and effectively manage on the grid conditions. On the solar eclipse, the so recently only we are going to face the solar eclipse on 21st of June of 2020. The Indian power system uh, has to. On the day 9:56 to 14:29 hours, the solar eclipse means what the what are the actions going on? The solar eclipse period, the lo lot of generations, solar generations going to be suddenly dropped. Why? There the clouds are also moving at the time. There the sun the sunset is there. Sun is not there. So solar eclipse during solar eclipse period, the generation going to be dropped down. How the how much generation going to drop down? The average ramp down rate is a one or two megawatt per minute. So in this our our total installed capacity of the wind generation is thirty-seven thousand megawatt. So thirty-seven thousand megawatt is means uh, during that period ten hours means we are almost twenty thousand. Seventeen thousand megawatt is there. Available means it goes to eleven thousand nine forty three megawatt. Eleven thousand nine forty three megawatt. So one or two megawatt per minute after. Told uh, for 59 hours, it goes to ramp up quickly. On that time, how the grid operated, the how the frequency variation, how the demand variation, how the generation variation, everything we are going to calculate in the short period. We have to take the decision immediately. How we are going to these things are also previous day itself. We have to design and we have to plan. That we have to uh, pick up the hydro generation during the solar reduction period. We are so uh, during the solar in the increasing period, reduce the hydro generation and by eff efficiently. And effectively manage on the day report that the solar uh, the variation is at 10 hours. Reduce the generation around 6,900 megawatt from 14, uh, 15,000 megawatt, 15,400 megawatt, 15,400 megawatt to uh, 6,900 megawatt. And suddenly on the 12, 13 hours it grows to CP increases the generation and reaches that 16,000 megawatt. So in this perspective we have to. We have to increase the hydro generation and reduce uh, based on the hydro generation pick up and uh, pick up and backing the back down back down that based on the solar generation increase perspective balancing balancing the demand and the generation effectively managed by the grid operator that is a system operator has to effectively manage on the day and the 
so now next slide we are going to what is load displacement center what are the works carried out how the load displacement center form when when the load displacement center formed and what are the works carried out we have to see that the, the 1991 only the term load displacement center was used for the first time in the amendment with effect from the 15th october 1991 in the electricity supply act 1948 Okay, this is the first load displacement center team formed. Before under load displacement center is available, uh, is there or not? Yes, is the load displacement center is there. In Tamil Nadu, 1964, uh, state lo- uh, state load displacement center is uh, in Tamil Nadu itself in Erode only, and then Delhi and uh, and uh, under is also there. After that only we are going to establish lot of uh, state uh, before uh, before 1991 lot of load displacement center is there on st- state sector only. That is a state load management center only is there. and load displacement center team is formed of uh, framed on 1991 only based on electricity act 1948 and defined as the apex bodies to ensure the integrated operation of power system in the respective areas of jurisdiction on 1998 and then electricity act 2003 uh, central government the minister of power has the uh, act implemented and act uh, come to the for into the force amended and established the rldc that is uh, nldc national load displacement center regional load displacement center that is rldc and sldc state load displacement center also defined the role and responsibilities of act is everything is in the based on the electricity act 2003 framed and they have to implement it on 2003 itself only and national load displacement center designated as apex body to ensure integrated operation of the national power system from 2005 onwards only before and that state sector only they have to manage and regional sector only they have to manage on from 2003 and brother uh, videos from, from the frame the regulations for the ring fencing and manpower certification everything on the frame on 2008 and hierarchy of the load displacement centers in india national load displacement center and regional load displacement center and state load displacement center in how many states in india there are totally 33 states and uh, including the state and union territories we have to every states are having the Uh, state load displacement center, unit displacement center, mini load displacement center is also there. They have to control uh, uh, 24 into 7 into 360 degrees uh, continuously. They have to monitor and to manage the grid in the effective manner. This is our national load displacement center. Uh, the national load displacement center only control the entire India and to monitor and they have to manage. in the efficient economic manner this is our southern regional load displacement center the center one is our the 400 kv transmission network transmission line and this is our um, schedule and actual demand schedule uh, schedule and actual the generation packets variation and here itself has the every state sector wise wind and the solar what the available and how to manage the demand the wind generation increasing period and demand duration is everything they are going to monitor every second and every minute and monitor and manage with the grid and the state sector perspective the hydro generation what are the fuels are available everything in the real time data they are going to monitor and manage in the and control with the southern region load dispatch center on state perspective this is our state load displacement center on state sector also they are going to see the same thing they are going to manage with our state sector only andhra tamil nadu karnataka in all the state sectors has to manage with the main load displacement center there is nothing but state load displacement center and what are the things are important to the system operator first thing the grid discipline for they have to follow they have to maintain they have to operate these are the main thing and then uh, real time information is must the real time information is uh, in pakali they are get, get receiving only they are going to operate based on the grid discipline if the real time our information is not available they are not going to operate if that is going to be difficult so on that in case of any any uh, any occurrences occur they are going to take efficiently decision making is important every system has every system operator has to take the decision efficiently and effectively they are going to take operate and manage the grid condition and maximum they have to operate economically is the operate is a must condition and reliable uninterrupted and quality supply given to the uh, customers they have to manage customers and then abt reserve what's the abt reserve the abt reserve is nothing but they are going to operate on the available based tariff based on the tariff they are going to operate in the economic and efficient and uh, uninterrupted power supply managed with the system operators hand
and uh, in iegc what is iegc iegc has framed the before i find fastest slide i have to focal point of the uh, indian perspective i have to already told in the first iegc rules and regulation they have framed a lot of rules and regulations have framed indian electricity grid code indian electricity grid code the indian electricity grid code has based on the indian grid code what are the regulations how we are going to operate how we are going to manage how the system monitor and everything they have to framed some regulation rules based on the rules and regulations state sector has to issued order and based on the state sector issued order uh, for uh, based on the indian electricity regulate grid code they have to followed and operate in the in pakam manner energy management system apex body responsible for integrated operation of a power system in the state and real monitoring of the grid and the supervision and the control of the intra state transmission system these are the main important regulation this regulations are also followed by the uh, load dispatch center that is a state as uh, a state load dispatch center and regional load dispatch center and national load dispatch center everybody should have to followed in the pakka manner suppose in case of any violation or any variation is that noticed by the regional or national load dispatch center immediately they have to they have to call them uh, call to and they inform to me inform the state division you have to you are going to variation in the demand period, demand and you are going to violating the rules and regulation so immediately you have to monitor and control within the limit based on the igc rules and regulation only and then periodic daily report daily report monthly report weekly report and yearly report everything they are based on the igc regulation every state and regional and national division has to reported in that website website itself it is available everything is there preparation of the state energy account and the demand estimation and demand management is also also rules and regulation is there just you have to briefly in future you have to go just to go through these are the things what are the things are there in load dispatch center how, how we are going to manage what are things going to manage open access and the dissemination of data power system analysis what are the power system analysis load flow analysis contingency analysis short circuit analysis and uh, and uh, system improvement and contingency conditions also generation improvement and pl plant availability factor and uh, plant management sector side transmission outage management sector this everything have, have framed the rules and regulation by from by iegc and state electricity board and everything has to manage uh, regulation documentation is must and procedures and the commands and regulation everything framed by the crc and acrc based on that each and every state load dispatch center and the regional load dispatch center has to followed and they have to give the information and guide them to every state sector and now uh, every a lot of our grid operation in now it is a one grid one nation the national road dispatch center has to guide them lot of activities national road center activities carried out and they have to implement and they have to guide them to our they have to operate and they have to manage within the in pakam manner what is the, what is the national regional state load dispatch center what is the aim first to understand the day to day operation of a power system and the control actions to be implemented on the system to meet the minute to minute variation of a system load demand okay and then objectives what are the main objectives to have an overview of the power system operation and control every system operator has to uh, overview about the power system so what are the transmission lines available what are the generations are available what the demand requirement what are the generation availability everything they have to calculate and they have to uh, Handed handed with the fingertips, fingertips, and they have been. If we do, if we if anything failed, and that they are know about that system operation perspective, they never operate in that in Paka manner. So everything they have to know all the things over with the power system operation and control, and the power frequency dynamics, and to design power frequency controller, and. the reactive power management is also must why the reactive uh, more reactive power inter voltage interaction is required yesterday our balmogan also uh, teaching lot of things uh, why the voltage variation is there the induction why it is coming more reactive power is required because in a lot of in, a, in domestic sector side a residential perspective lot of induction load increased due to more induction load increased the reactive power requirement is more at that time so in this respect they have to the grid operator also manage this perspective also important these are the main objective and then what are the activities carried out main activities in the load dispatch center dispatch 
operational coordination and the communication and scada the communication scada is also main aspect if communication scada is failure the dispatch center is also operator is a very difficult because each and every fraction of second they want to get the data from generation perspective and uh, transmission perspective and discom perspective also everything they want to monitor in the in the in effective and uh, operating in the effective perform manner in operational coordination what are the operational coordination in transmission sector said what the feeder flows going there they, is it going on in, in a as per the system permit level the generation going to generate in the system perspective manner and everything based on that the dispatch the uh, in communication sector is pakka manner good okay in operational perspective we are going to manage okay uh, the issues in satisfied and there only dispatch is also in the perspective in good otherwise it is the balancing is also difficult if community one if any one is failure is operating is also difficult to balance the load under the generation so this th three things are the uh, main important perspective and what are the functions to be carried out by the load dispatch centers in india under the system operators that is uh, operation planning protection coordination assessment of transfer capability and frequency control voltage control and restoration restoration what are in case of any line tripping immediately how to restore what first we have to find what are the why it is tripped uh, why this cause what's the cause we have to find out and then only we have to restore that feeder immediately within a day in case of any major breakdown only we have to give more time a uh, minimum fault within a short period we have to restore that transmission line and in case of generation outage immediately we have to restore uh, restore the generator unit also what's the available assessment of transfer capability transfer capability is nothing but what is transfer capability we have we are going to calculate the transmission availability transfer capability what lot of transmission lines are there in transmission sector side one above 110 kv is the transmit transcoms and uh, below 110 kv land is the uh, above six below 66 kv is the discom side and above 66 kv that is a transmission perspective so we have to how much power flow is possible or tra transfer from one place to another place Pro uh, presently now i am in chennai i need power 100 megawatt how i am getting the power what are the first i got to uh, find out what are the transmission lines are there uh, how uh, what the transmission capacity these things are also going to calculate assessment of transfer capability and then what are the function achieving the economy and the efficiency sharing of resources hydro resources and uh, renew renewable sources and conversion sources and op merit what is merit order operation based on the cost uh, thermal generation 4 rupees to 5 rupees and conversion generator right now is also very, uh, very less only hydro sorry hydro solar and wind generation and reactive power management is also main perspective and congestion management and the transmission loss optimization why it is coming transmission loss optimization in generation generated in one place and uh, utilized in another area the from orissa to chennai orissa to kolar karnataka the power for power transmitter through hvdc line there is a very meager loss only in case of ac transmission line there is a minimum loss 2 percentage to 3 percentage is only loss is there the 2 percent to 3 percent how we are going to calculate how we are going to sharing to every state that also calculate and how the loss going to opt optimized these things are also managed by the system operator on the market operator side generation resource scheduling and equal information access to all players open access open access what are the open access short term open access medium to open access and the long term open access in short term open access is the intraday uh, time head and we can everything is there short term open access covered and medium term open access is also 3 months to 6 months and long term open access 6 months to 15 years and 30 years we are going to calculate meter data collection why why it is meter data collection is required for energy billing purpose second purpose in right now we are also we are also aware about that meter data collection Uh, in residents also uh, by monthly our uh, electrical uh, assessors has come uh, visit your home and uh, noted the reading and they have to billing they have to produce it uh, so in the same manner in generation sector side every month every day they are going to calculate how much generation injected uh, how much generation utilized they are calculated by the state road dispatch centers and based on that we have to billing calculated on the weekly basis and monthly basis so by the state load dispatch center and uh, state load center, commercial wing commercial wing they have to calculate economic and the regional energy account the account calculated by the southern regional power committee srp southern region power committee 
and next we will go to assessment of transfer capability okay sorry here itself the transmission capacity versus transfer capability why transfer capability capability is less than transfer capacity in transfer capacity suppose in case of any any one of the you have to carry out the one transmission line uh, one transmission line is the carried out for twin mos conductor twin mos conductor carry carrying capacity is a 2000 megawatt is possible that is a transmission capacity is it possible to allow transmission capacity 1000 megawatt no it is not possible so how much we are going to allow in this perspective our central electricity authority has issued the transmission planning criteria book has issued they had issued the norms and conditions how the volt what the voltage are going to maintain how the transmission conductor wise they have to uh, surge they have to allowed the capacity surge they have to three different categories they have to segregate the surge impedance loading voltage limit and the thermal limit this condition also followed and based on the condition they have to norms the n minus 1 criteria stability criteria non uniform loading of parallel lines loop flows voltage profile load generation disposition intra state network configuration and law of diminishing returns the n minus 1 criteria what is n minus 1 criteria if if one road is only if you going on one if one line is there suppose what generator is a 500 megawatt is transmitted to the other line suppose in case of one line triple means what the fact of what about the condition of the other sector distribution sector side so entire area going to be block so there is no supply so in this perspective we are going to introduce n minus 1 criteria if you construct one transmission line another line parallelly we are going to connected and equally have to transfer in case of any failure another line will carry out that load and transfer from this uh, this area to this area and supply uh, maintain without any interruption this is also carried out by the based on the sorry in this perspective we have to manage and construct the transmission lines the total transfer capability what is the what are total transfer capability conditions carried out thermal limit voltage limit stability limit the three limits are going to be followed as per the transmission planning criteria stability limit is the main and the voltage limit is the second and the third is the thermal limit when thermal limit is reached in case of any tripping the feeder one feeder flow reached goes to higher side that is a thermal limit so between most conductors uh, total transmission capacity is a uh, uh, 1000 megawatt that is a uh, thermal limit is a uh, 874 megawatt and voltage limit is a uh, 720 and the stability limit is a uh, 515 megawatt normally as per transmission criteria we are going to allow 515 megawatt only in case of any voltage variation is there on the time only we are going to reach allowed to 720 megawatt we, we, do you suppose in case of the environmental based the temperature is also less than that we are going to allow up to 720 megawatt in case of any line tripping other uh, the, that line could allow Allowed up to thermal limit. That is a 874 megawatt for that twin mos conductor. Different types of conductor is available. 110 kV level is a 110 kV level Panther conductor and Raccoon, Rabbit, so many conductors are there. And 230 kV Kunda and Zebra is conductors available. And 400 kV twin mos and uh, twin mos conductor and uh, twin Zebra uh, conductor also used utilized for that for 230 kV side and 400 kV side also. And uh, quad mos. Quad Bersimus, that is a 760 kV lines, and H2 lines also utilized fully. And and determines of how the determines of the of the transmission capability of the transmission line. Thermal limit surge limit. The capability of the high voltage power line is usually set by thermal limit for shorter lines and transmission distances. Up to 80 kilometer. If 80 kilometers only, less than 80 kilometers, we have to allow up to thermal limit. That is 874 megawatt. Longer distance. That is 80 to 320 kilometers. Longer distance. We have to allow the surge impedance loading only. Or sorry, surge impedance loading, uh, voltage limit. Voltage limit above 320 kilometer. We have to maintain the surge impedance loading. Why you are going to three above three kilometer three above 320 kilometer surge impedance loading? In case of any tripping, it will cause major impact on the system. So that's why we are going to maintain the surge impedance loading. In shorter distance means we have to parallel lines are there. So easily we are going to manage with the system. There is no problem.
in available transfer capability what are the conditions going to carry out the available transfer capability how to calculate transfer capability for the transmission line what is transfer capability available transfer capability available transfer capability is nothing but total transfer capability less than reliability margin what is uh, total transfer capability total transfer capability sir yeah, call to calculate and uh, to calculate the or to, to add the all the transmission lines capable capacity and cumulatively add the you have to find out the one capacity that is the total transfer capability reliability margins we are going to follow two conditions one is the uh, first condition for the two percent of the state demand and uh, or higher generation unit that is a reliability margin and what are the conditions going to carry for the simulation analysis for the brainstorming first transmission planning and approved shutdown one of the thing anticipated the network topology capacity addition this thing and next load generation lg bar is nothing but load generation balance report last year reports and weather forecast these are all this uh, based on this thing we have to calculate the anticipated the substation load anticipated express thermal generation these things are also important to calculate the simulation analysis for that thing and then last year what the ant last year pattern what's the last month pattern and everything we are going to calculate and anticipated the express hydro generation and the what the operating limits what the operator experience what's the planning criteria what are the new lines are coming what are the new generating stations added everything we are going to uh, consider and study study the forecast uh, based on the forecast based on the data availability only we have to simulate analyze the report and consider the credible contingency also and then we are getting that total transfer capability less reliability margin equals the available transfer capability based on that only at present we are calculating sorry this is the regional transmission because the five regions are there southern region to western region connectivity is there and southern region to eastern region connectivity is there and southern uh, western connected with northern and western connected with eastern region is there and northern has connected with eastern and western region tamil uh, southern region has connected only two region western and eastern region only and uh, north eastern region connected with north eastern region and north east uh, northern region also this week north eastern i don't mention sorry i had added that and based on that transmission availability only we we have sorry based on the transfer capability we have to allocate the power for the long term open access medium to open access short one short term open access first term first curve basis collective of power exchange sto short term open access day and short term open access intraday open access based on the available transfer capability only our central transmission utility has to allowed to uh, allowed allowed to uh, utilize the power from other station to uh, one one station to two second station area and then renewable power position and before and that one minute it will short videos i have to show that real time uh, power flow analysis have uh, some videos is the real time power system analysis and the smart grid system i have to just uh, brief about it and then next uh, i am going to next thing in electrical or electronics engine are you here are you able to hear a pivotal role yes sir okay, okay. yes you are in the live platform with the right force on 30th july 2012 india faced the biggest blackout in its history around 700 million people from 22 states were without electricity for two days so audio is hearing sir but video is not visible sir oh one minute huh? okay sir no now we have no. no no sir no sir okay one minute
this uh, this picture are you able to see no sir so oh, video audio only you are going to hear huh no audio too is not audible sir okay one minute one minute this one okay no sir why i want me but i will check that up uh it is not possible huh? share so okay so come to the powerpoint okay this is not possible so okay before and that we have to uh, slightly discuss on this thing and the renewable proportion and uh, next we are going before and that we uh, we have any doubts about on that previous slides and uh, previous uh, discussions shall i discuss and then we go through renewable power position okay edo pesalama sir இல்ல இது பத்தி ஏதாவது ப்ரீவியஸ் ஸ்லைட்ஸ் எல்லாம் போட்டோம் இல்லையா இதுல ஏதாச்சும் உங்களுக்கு எனி டவுட்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் ஏதாச்சும் இருக்குதா நீங்க இது பண்ணலாம் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் உங்களுக்கு டவுட்ஸ் இருந்தா கேட்கலாம் இப்ப நிறைய விஷயம் சொல்லிட்டு வந்த இல்லையா உங்களுக்கு இதுல வந்து எனி டவுட்ஸ் தேர் இதுல what you understand about that thing adala vende neenga idhula vadhi enna idu pannikitinga first actually ipo fuel sector side enna nariya fuels ella solli irundha ipo actually ungalku ipo paatha paathirupinga idhula vende enna neenga what you learn what you what's your opinion and suggestion unga suggestion enna enna idu enna therinjikittinga abingiradha kekkren ipa india ipa actually demand sonna illaya light of the event solli sonna light of the event neenga la veetla irundha pa paathirupinga 5th of may la pannanum illaya 5th of may and the day vandu light of the event appa eppadi irundathu ungalukkala அந்த டைம் நிறைய மீடியா வந்து நிறைய இது பண்ணிட்டு இருந்தாங்க இல்லையா एक्चुअली மீடியா வந்து இப்படி வோல்டேஜ் இது ஆகும் இது ஆகும் அப்படி நிறைய லாட் ஆஃப் கமெண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் கமிங் फ्रॉम யூ ஷட் நாட் ஆஃப் ஆல் தி வோல்டேजेस அட் ஆல் தி லோட்ஸ் அட் எ டைம் லைக் தி டென்சன்ஸ் ஓகே பட் ஆன் தி டே ஆன் தி டே வாட் வாட் யூ ஆர் ஃபேசிங் நோ சச் इश्यूज நோ சச் इश्यूज बिकॉज़ வை 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 இட் இஸ் நோ சச் इश्यूज बिकॉज़ देयर ஆர் கிரிட் ஆபரேட்டர்ஸ் அண்ட் ஆல் தி லோட் டிஸ்பென்சரி ஹஸ் டு ஆபரேட் இன் தி paka manner they okay. have been to operate in a manner yes that's why only is the manage what are the problems are uh, expecting lot of things so, uh, our tv uh, tv failure airo idu failure airo so media la romba media idu pannirundanga but enna na edume varagama pakka va enna aachi and the sudden crash actually expecting evlo pannirundanga 15000 da pannirundanga amma ana but vandu enna aachi adikku amma double the time double the time load reduction aanuchu but double the time load reduction aagum bolude nammala enna pannuchu easy a vandu மேனேஜ் பண்ண முடிஞ்சிருச்சு எப்படி வித் த அவேலபிலிட்டி சோர்ஸ் நம்ம கிட்ட எவ்வளவு அவேலபிள் சோர்சஸ் இருக்கு 3 இல்ல 370 ஜிகாவாட்ஸ் இருக்கு அவேலபிள் சோர்ஸ் நம்மளோட ரெக்குயர்மென்ட் எவ்வளவு 170 ஜிகாவாட்ஸ் ரைட்ங்களா சோ 50 ஜிகாவாட்ஸ் வந்து sorry 50 परसेंटेज வந்து தான் நமக்குளுடைய ரெக்குயர்மென்ட் இருக்கு இப்ப பிரசன்ட் சோ அப்ப ஈஸியா என்ன பண்றோம் நம்மால மேனேஜ் பண்ண முடிஞ்சிச்சு சோ ஃபியூச்சர் வந்து இதே கண்டிஷன் நெக்ஸ்ட் இப்ப என்ன இந்த அவர் பிரைம் மினிஸ்டர் ஹனர் பிரைம் மினிஸ்டர் என்ன சொல்லிருக்காருன்னா ரெனியூவல் பவர் வந்து ஃபுல்லா வந்து கொண்டுட்டு வரணும் ரெனியூவல் பவர் வந்து ஃபுல்லா கொண்டுட்டு வரணும் ஏ வை தி ஆர் இனிஷியேட்டிங் மோர் ரெனியூவல் டு பவர் டு தி இந்தியா அண்ட் वर्ल्ड ஓவர் ஆல்சோ இனிஷியேட்டட் மோர் ரெனியூவல் பவர் இன் வாட் परपஸ் வை தி ஆர் गोइंग டு இனிஷியேட்டட் மோர் ரெனியூவல் பவர் டு தி இந்தியா ப்ளீஸ் எனி ஒன் गोइंग டு டெல் மீ அண்ட் தென் ஐ ஆர் गोइंग டு ஸ்டார்ட் தி நெக்ஸ்ட் ரெனியூவல் பவர் பொசிஷன் we are going to initiate the more renewable power in india and world world over each and every, every day you are going to see the such a paper uh, they have to mention renewable power renewable power increasing renewable power increase uh, renewable power is the main target solar power injecting battery storage electric vehicle and lot of things are coming conventional not coming only this thing only coming why it is coming any one of them please uh, discuss please share Sir, your major- views Uh, uh, major thing it's uh, we can reduce pop, uh, pollution sir yes very good very good uh, okay. mm. and then the coal and the petrol uh, availability is going on decreasing yes correct okay. so we are switching to renewable sources yes uh, yeah. renewable sources uh, available in the abundance sir and it will not vanish at all yes correct that is very good uh, very good very good okay uh, and then any Other even thing, though the initial uh, installation cost is high, 
uh, once it is installed we can uh, use it for long time so yes, and uh, uh, it will not have any pollution or like that no advantage no disadvantage will be there in renewable power uh, yes very good disadvantages uh, in uh, in renewable sector say any disadvantages are that conventional sector side is disadvantage is mainly pollution only pollution okay and uh, renewable uh, renewable sector side any disadvantages sir uh, disadvantages is there sir but not that much more compared yeah. to conventional sources yes correct impaka and and uh, the uh, fuel availability also reduced from, from before to 2050 the fuel availability also reduced so that's why we are going to implement more on that and uh, in india what's the position in the renewable sector side any uh, idea third uh, sir uh, third third place third and fourth uh, third or fourth place fourth place fourth. only uh, fourth place and, uh, number one is uh, usa uk and the uc usa and china and fourth is our india is i say renewable sector side more injection with that in uh, india tamil nadu what's the, what's the place first i think so yes yes correct in paka tamil nadu is the perfect and the second is the gujarat and then andhra and karnataka is also come in the next stages okay and uh, anybody others others give, give any suggestion any idea any idea about the renewable sector why you are going to install more renewable power in what purpose you are going to install is it is it a flexible is it a, a, is it in um, uh, what the seasonal generation only is there are renewable power it is not uh, continuously throughout the year it is is it not it is not possible so how we are going to manage this thing anyone please give me your views and then we are go to a renewable power question please all are mute Please unmute yourself and we will talk. So okay. So next we will go to the renewable power position sector side. Okay. Yes, What's sir. our ah uh, okay? What's our PM target? Prime Minister target upgraded in the RE power sector side. India reaches its goal of 175 gigawatts of renewable power, which includes 100 gigawatts of solar and 60 gigawatts of wind power and others. Rest it will need curtailment of the renewable power of about 27 gigawatts. Uh, and the and when we move towards 450 gigawatts renewable power, 300 gigawatts of solar and 140 gigawatts of wind, the curtailment level could go as high as 100 gigawatt. Why they are going to mention that the curtailment level go as a high as 100 gigawatts and curtailment level power of about 27 gigawatts they have to maintain. And why they are going to insert more solar power? One side we give them 100 gigawatts of solar and four side we give them 300 gigawatts of solar. Present our state demand is a 170 gigawatts only, and we are going to establish 170 gigawatts. Is it possible to generate full 170 gigawatts? It is not possible based on the seasonal. availability of the wind power in the solar generation is available on the during the day time only so off peak period time uh, night period there, there is no solar generation but right now they have to invented night time also we have to generate uh, minimum generation in the solar generation it is also possible and then how we are going to manage fully with the renewable power we are going to establish full renewable power in the country and utilize the full renewable power And uh, conventional power going to uh, minimize the conventional power going to uh, uh, fully not fully utilize. We have to we are planning to utilize partially with the base load station in case of any variation in the wind uh, wind or solar generation variation period. We have to establish the grid through the reserves reserve based on the hydro reserves and then. gas stations and diesel power plant we are going to utilize there and conventional power plant also partially we are going to utilize there we have to extend the fuel availability right now the fuel availability is up to 2050 you have to enhance it to up to 20 uh, to 100 2100 years and 100 year up to 100 years we are going to elaborate extended so that's why we are going to utilize the more renewable power is a huge availability based on the huge availability of the re power that we utilize the more and we have to maintain the reactive power management and real time management everything has to manage in this perspective lot of studies and lot of research work and lot of work carried out and a few a few, uh, few years after we are going to test more electric vehicles coming on the time how the grid operated 
right now the fuel uh, diesel power plant diesel and petrol cars are a lot of there and gas gas uh, gas car also there everything is going to be stopped and electric vehicles only there on the time how the power requirement is there right now is 170 gigawatts it goes to reach around 250 gigawatts so 250 gigawatts how we are going to manage is it possible to manage yes when uh, introduce the more solar power plant and store solar battery storage battery storage with technologies also introduced and biomass and biopower and small hydro power plant lot of things are projects are uh, introduced by our ministry of non renewable energy sector projection we will need add 100 gigawatts of quality and decarbonized energy matching the demand requirements of the discom to avoid curtailments by the 2030 And there are some present that are given 2022 target for the out of 170 gigawatts, 100 gigawatts for solar and 60 gigawatts for wind and small hydro power plant 5 gigawatts and biomass 10 gigawatts. And in Tamil Nadu specifically, 22 gigawatts power planned out of 170 gigawatts, 22 gigawatts power. And growth. Growth of the one set gigawatt from 2015 to 2021. 2015 only we have to introduce a one set of gigawatts target fixed by our central government on the day 2015 to 2020. We reached actually as per the plan we are uh, from 2015 to 1638 and then 46 gigawatts and then 63, 74 and 28 to 19 gigawatts. Uh, but the, all those one set of gigawatts we reach right now is our. 2020 141 gigawatts, but we reached only 126 gigawatts. The balance is 15% only is pending, but we are yet to be reached. Past three months we have that during lockdown period we are unable to commission the lot of solar power plant and generating power plant. After the COVID period only we are going to start the all the works. Now the people are also start that work, so yet to be reached the 141 gigawatts at 2021, and then 21 to 22 balance is 35. Gigawatt, 34 gigawatts. So, as per the Central Ministry of Power, is it possible to reach? Yes, it is possible. Uh, 100 gigawatts reached uh, as per the Ministry of Power. And the next what? The next target that is a uh, 400 gigawatts by 2030. So, balance of 225 gigawatts going to be reached within a uh, eight eight years. Uh, eight years. It is possible. Yes, it is possible. So, more solar generation. Already previous slides are also growth the growth of the solar sector and the wind perspective. Already have to uh, shown that seen the shown that the screen also noticed there. And then where the more solar availability in India uh, available wind wind availability in India that is in Tamil Nadu, uh, Andhra, Karnataka and Maharashtra side and Gujarat. Gujarat side and Andhra Karnataka side is also having the more renewable available potential is available more renewable uh, available and Tamil Nadu is also more solar. Tamil Nadu sector side in the. Uh, um, Kaitar, Tirunel Valley side, and the Coimbatore area having the more renewable sector side. In Karnataka, is also having the more uh, wind power sources also available. In solar, solar side, uh, scatterly available in India, and more power solar generation is available in that Gujarat complex area. Gujarat, and then Bhopal area, Orissa area, and Jaipur area, and the Delhi side respectively is also having the more uh, solar generations are available. Now they are also commissioned. More generation power plant in Gujarat complex and Maharashtra, Maharashtra complex. In wind energy, in Tamil Nadu specifically, that is going to be the pioneer in promoting wind in renewable energy programs. Tamil Nadu conduct a natural meteorological topographical settings for the wind power. Tamil Nadu is the leader in wind power due to the attractive policy incentives of the Tamil Nadu state throughout the entire country of India also. Here itself only a single meter system, attractive feed-in tariff, wheeling and banking mechanism. Everything is there available in only in the Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is also the best suited for the offshore wind power. The policy under the financiation by the Yamanari and the government of India. Right now, Yamanari has here instead the lot of steps. And wind pass in Tamil Nadu is a Palakkad pass and Kambam, Sengkottai and Aralvai Mulli. Three passes are available. This area only is having the more renewable. Power is available. Kampalakat, Kambam, Sengkottai, and Aralvai Mulli powers. And uh, Palakat first. What are the areas? Coimbatore and the Dindigal areas. Sengkottai means Tirunelveli and the Tuticorin area. Aralvai Mulli, Kanyakumari, Radhaburam, and Muppandal. In Theni, the areas of Theni, Kambam, and Andipatti. Shishor, Rameshwaram, Pumbhar, and Mulli Kado. This area also having the more wind potential is available. This in 
தமிழ்நாடு பெர்ஸ்பெக்டிவ் என் குஜராத் இஸ் ஆல்சோ சீஷோ சைட் அவைலபிள் அண்ட் கர்நாடகா இஸ் ஆல்சோ மோர் ப்ராசஸ் ஆர் அவைலபிள் அண்ட் தி ஹேவிங் எ மோர் ரிசோர்சஸ் ஆர் அவைலபிள் இன் வாட் ஆர் த கன்சைன்ஸ் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் தட் ஆர் ஏ கன்சைன்ஸ் இன் த ஸ்டேட் செக்டர் அண்ட் த கண்ட்ரி செக்டர் த இந்தியன் இந்தியன் கண்ட்ரி செக்டர் சைட் த திஸ் இஸ் ஆர் திஸ் பவர் இஸ் அ இன்ஃபிம் பவர் திஸ் இஸ் நாட் த ஃபிம் பவர் ஃபிம் பவர் இஸ் ஓன்லி கன்வென்ஷனல் ஓன்லி த ஃபிம் பவர் த ஆர்இஎஸ் பவர் இஸ் ஆல்சோ தட் solar and wind are also the infim power only that is uh, the we are going to face lot of huge variation is there and challenging day by day grid operation and so but we are going to manage in the efficient manner with the availability of the re power in case of any loss of generation high highly away, uh, on that during that time some, suppose in more clouds are on the time on the time the huge variation the solar generation example except that so during solar eclipse loss uh, huge variation 12000 megawatt is there as per the preliminary calculation 12000 megawatt calculated 11943 megawatt uh, expect as per the expectation reached 12000 megawatt reached on the huge variation sudden variation based on the cloud cover makes the grid highly unstable so on that time immediately we are going to balancing that the uh, solar demand increase the uh, hydro generation and gas station and conventional power and establish the grid within a shorter period within the shorter duration how we are going to manage in case of sudden dip they are going to huge uh, huge uh, huge loss uh, huge loss and faced by the grid in this condition how to manage the uh, due to high variation demand reserve power hydro and and uh, gas station has to pick up and manage the grid or generation is a location specific far from the load center for the high capacity transmission needed for the re power evacuation wind is available only during the june to september each year solar is available only during 7 am to 4:30 4:30 pm only after that immediately we are going to pick up the base load conventional station and hydro stations and gas stations what are the operational and the commercial challenges are faced the gas and hydro station balancing the re power the frequent ramping up and backing down of thermal plants accompanied the re results to increase the wear and tear of auxiliaries and boiler punctures on the thermal position in this perspective we are going to operate in the smooth manner we are going to uh, smooth manner we are going to operate by the based on the grid condition the load dispatch center operator system operator has to give the directions to each and every generator sir this time uh, based on the forecast sir this time solar going to be reduced this time wind generation going to uh, reduce uh, drops so dropped so in this perspective you have to increase the generation before terminates before uh, four blocks uh, prior priorly they have to intimate and have to pick up the generation and balance it in the smooth manner so every state sector based on the national load dispatch center and the southern load dispatch center they have to each and every minute to minute watch the forecasting calculating the forecasting and the state of general also act accordingly and in pack up manner and the huge variation is also plus or minus 250 megawatt they are going to allow and penalty is also there and we have to allow the pen, uh, avoid the penalty and avoid the uh, high variations also and what are the integra- uh, do, during the renewable integration what are the key challenges high capital cost and intermittency of generation forecasting techniques and separate control desk for the renewables and uh, having ancillary service and place separate control desk for renewables right now previously i shown that the state load dispatch center regional load dispatch center these are the load dispatch center for common all all the all field sector side is control is the one control center. that is separate control desk what is a control desk that is a renewable energy management center you are established there renewable energy the renewable energy management center has to manage only for the renewable sector side only how the demand, how the renewable power pick up how when the renewable power going to drop down everything they are going to calculate they are going to manage and they have to declare the forecast availability availability of the solar power time so availability of the wind power supply time everything they are going to calculate and given to the system operator based uh, based on the forecast the system has to operate in a uh, economic and efficient manner and decision making is must and standard for renewable integration fault right throw capability and the high frequency tripping what's fault right throw capability during the high voltage tripping when the high voltage tripping uh, when it is occurs in solar sector side solar sector side is during the solar is also during high, high sunlight time there is a solar generation going to be increased more on the time the high voltage also mm, high voltage problem we are going to face on the day immediately we have to increase the Uh, voltage 
increase the voltage so so maintain the voltage also as per the iec norm that is our main amp main aim so on the time you have to fault rate the capability support to restrict the high voltage and maintain the limit high frequency tripping uh, that is also we have to manage the inventorization low voltage uh, fault fault rate through capability will support to manage the frequency and the voltage condition high capacity corridors for renewable evocation for the hvdc lines right now we are established we established and commissioned that line raigara pugalo that is a 8000 800 kv hvdc 6000 megawatt from eastern region to tamil nadu southern region is commissioned uh, last uh, last month only they are commissioned then a single pole they transmit to power 3000 megawatt is possible from Ch chatishgarh to tamil nadu southern region pugalor it is possible and from Puga tamil nadu to pugalor is also possible to transfer from here to there and there to here it is possible from the hudis line this line transfer 2000 megawatt 2000 kilometer this line transfer from for, for so many dc 5 dc chatishgarh uh, orissa telangana andhra uh, karnataka and tamil nadu state reach there this is for high the long distance of the transmission line another line is utilized is talcher kola that is a 2000 megawatt cap transfer capability this line is a 3000 megawatt transfer capability both poles are there 6000 megawatt is a possible to transfer and the generic represent representation of the direct incremental cost for the discounts in the initial years initially only we are going to invest huge investment after uh, 10 years 2030 onward we are going to wear where the, the solar generation cost is very bigger only green power cost is going to be very bigger and uh, conventional power cost is going to be higher based on the investment going to be higher that going to be higher range so that's why on the time the renewable power only is a plays a major role so generation level grid parity began with the re would be a cheaper than the coal so we are going to utilize the more re power after 2030 so when no or not uh, 2030 2025 onwards we are going to utilize more re power and less conventional power on the day we are going to manage and we are going to utilize more than power so everyone has to able to produce and able to inject the power to the grid it is possible yes it is possible suppose i am uh, i have a one, one giga one kilowatt solar power plant i will have uh, one kilowatt power my requirement is only Yes, 500 kilowatt power only uh, I have to utilize. Balance 500 kilowatt power has to uh, inject to the grid. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Yeah, the grid, the uh, state utilities is allowed. Yes, it is allowed. Allowable only. Based on the electricity norms. Suppose, sir, I, I am going to plan one, consider generating power plant and uh, supply to my area, village area only. And balance power, is it supply to uh, the grid? Is it possible, sir? Yes, it is possible. And is it possible to store that energy? Yes, it is possible. The supply energy storage, the energy during the morning time, morning to evening time, you have to store that energy, surplus energy. And the evening time, you have to support to the grid during the high peak period. When the peak period comes to the grid, only the morning peak time is a 6 to 10 and a lighting peak time is a 18 to 22 hours. 18 to 22 hours only is the high peak demand. And the morning peak time is a during morning time is a compared to the light peak demand, bigger only difference is that 1000 megawatt only is a variation is there. So on that time, we have to utilize, utilize the more power. In that uh, after implementing the RE power, more RE power, we have to utilize it during the daytime fully utilize the RE power and during E peak hour utilize the conventional power and the energy storage, energy storage batteries we have to partially utilize it and partially support to manage the grid without any, un, uh, any interruption to the consumers and industrial perspective. What are the issues in the large scale renewable integration? The intermittency, variability and ramp rates, wind power not coincident with the peak load uncertainties never match load generation balance, reactive power management, and fault right throw capability plants connected at remote concentrated locations with weak transmission network, renewable plants providing lesser grid support during system distribution and exit. The weaker transmission network in the area also has most, more renewable power is available in the wind potential area. And in that area, we have to consider more transmission line. In this perspective, a lot of studies carried out on more transmission line have to constructed and commissioned that line in entire India. 400 kV lines and 1,600 kV lines and HUD line line. This specifically only the HUD lines also commissioned, like a Pugalor line. And way forward at 35% renewable energy penetration, presently the Indian electricity is there, well secured from the renewable integration. We are getting geared up to meet the 
challenges once the renewable energy penetration crosses the five digit mark we are going to in come manage that mark what are the steps you are going to take and that will show on the next screen the systematic scheduling based on accurate forecasting holds a key we are looking for looking for potential collaboration for development of accurate forecasting models especially for wind development of environment friendly and cost effective story solutions are another area we are willing to collaborate in the energy storage is the next version right now we are previously we are uh, coal based stations are main uh, mainly for main, main major role and the next for renewable sector major role and then next goes to energy storage system major role going to play within a two years this is a renewable energy management center what's a renewable energy management center work the renewable energy management center forecasting scheduling shall be carried out on a short term basis day ahead intraday and weekend basis to enable more re penetration this is a co closely coordination with the uh, southern region load displacement uh, load displacement center for generation control for the smooth grid operation and each and every second they has to calculate forecasting the renewable power this is the rmc forecasting tech architecture and automatic generation role in what purpose the automatic generation control is required automatic generation role, what's the purpose the automatic generation control center is the, what purpose you are going to implement in case of sudden frequency variation or sudden any generator trip or any transmission line trip in that case immediately the more generation requirement is there and the requirement how we are going to able to manage on that time immediately we are going to call that generation and pick up the generation it gives more time so that's why we are going to arrange automatically we are going to pick up the generation through automatic generation control unit so the if automatic control unit setup is available in the state load center the state load center or the regional load center national load center is to possible to increase the generation from control center itself the remote area suppose the generator plant is in the remote area through scada and the agc control we have to increase the generation within the shorter duration it is possible with implementation of the agc this is the architecture that is the only the control area is a uh, generating plant is there and then the scada through iccp via we have to uh, communicate the network the data transformation everything through everything through the automatic generation lan through iccp only we get the transfer data transfer from this place to this place control area and generating plants everything through the network scada and the protection cells in there cyber security wise we have to arrange a lot of protections as per we have to carried out and manage the grid within the within the permissible limit also the generator has to full generation we are going to pick up we have to pick up the generation partially only up to 10% only we are going to manage suppose 210 megawatt one generator is that means 10% 21 megawatt only allowable to pick up the generation for a agc automatic generation control what's the scope setting of the agc system establishing iccp the scada ems system receiving all record real time data for scada ems system over iccp iccp via we have to record and supply and commissioning remote terminal unit generation plant in both side we have to provide the rtu and the agc control terminal unit and monitoring system based on the provision we have to manage the system and pick up the generation is also easily possible and developing a logic the rtu into drive drive unit wise set point from plant set point received from agc this is the agc and the next goes to active network management in area in the next step we are going to uh, introduce and establish the active network management active network is why the previously conventional power plant we are going to use the automatic generation control in active network management in the renewable sector side why it is a renewable sector only going to say there in uh, ore power is having a huge variation is that there is a flex not it is not a sustained load pickup generation is not there this is the infim power so infim power having a lot of huge variation there so that's why you're going to have active network network management in case of any variation there will immediately the active management has to act dependently active dependently the actively managed network device within the safe operational limit ensuring overall grid stability real time coordinated intelligent control platform that controls a flexible network control elements like renewable energy and distributed energy resources etc active network management ensures the overall grid balance in a reliable and efficient way conclusion forecasting and balancing mechanism are an essential tools to aid the integration of the increasing amount of wind energy 
forecasting helps us to make renewable energy appear more like a conventional power station storage technology to store the renewable energy have to be cost effective and available transfer capability margin between regions to be revised practically everything that is a, right right now we are going to day by day in, de in uh, declare the available transfer capability in which every hour going to declare the based on the real time market what the transmission availability what the car uh, what the fuel availability uh, what you what's your requirement suppose in case of any generation order immediately is it possible to uh, procure the power from the uh, any region yes it is possible from a real time market uh, implemented on 16 uh, 2020 always real time market has implemented in india the the real time market has auctions uh, going on 96 block uh, per day that is uh, for every half an hour you are going to uh, give the application to procure the power from based on the bidding suppose i have uh, i am going planning to procure the power from that is on but, but period is six time blocks procure the actions going to carry on every half an hour once based on the transmission capability so well while available transfer going capability going to be declared every half an hour once now uh, is a record based on, uh, because that real time market based on real time market we have to declare the available transfer capability based on the available tra more tra more transfer capability is available means there is no problem every hour not declare one hour one day one, every one hour one declare or two hours one declare or is six hours one should declare or 12 hours or every day one time only we have to declare the available transfer capability if less transfer capability or transfer capability available means the corridor congestion is available we have to declare every half an hour once based on the demand under the supply availability so these are the things and then visualization and situational awareness and the data flow between the remote terminal unit to sub load dispatch center and sub load dispatch center to state load dispatch center state load dispatch center to uh, regional load dispatch center through iccp via only we getting all those details and the remote terminal to directly connected with the regional load dispatch center is also available with the conventional major conventional generating stations and then national load dispatch center regional load dispatch center via uh, getting the Details through international load dis uh, national load dispatch center, oh, yeah. and based on that RTU availability, every data minute by minute watch with the uh, NLDC, RLDC, SLDC, and sub LDC has to monitor, control, and manage, and operation optimal and effective operation of a large power system requires a proactive approach, problem identification, analysis of a huge amount of information by the system operators and fast operator response is required this thing when, uh, how it is possible based on the rtu terminal availability only effective visualization method key to empowering the system operator strong motivating factor for quick operator response increased productivity need for improved visualization what are the improved visualization required increasing system complexity large quantum of data megawatt megawatt kv is available and high data volume from energy management system applications monitoring parameters of interest for neighboring control areas and early detection of anomalous conditions security margins and market monitoring everything is are needed how everything the improved visualization these things are available only possible to manage and possible to monitor and possible to Uh, in management in the pakka manner and effective manner otherwise if, if the visualization is failure if the improve, uh, visualization is not improved these things are also manage difficulty in real time condition so everything is available and everything is managed in the pakka manner in the data is also previously through scada valley we are getting the data right now we have to establish the facial measurement unit that is a facial measurement unit every second 40 samples per second in scada uh, 25 samples per second only we are getting the data after implementing the uh faster machine mode unit we are getting the data of 40 samples per second so we are going to operate in a pakka manner in effectively and efficiently this is the energy management system with the scada just briefly or tile uh, go the the energy management system is a especially designed for the automated control and monitoring of a electric power under the utility system the data obtained from uh, such actions are 
used to train operators in a control center and for performing engineering studies for the future section like planning optimization maintaining maintenance scheduling on a frequent basis and to produce trend analysis and annual consumption forecasts these are the energy management system and energy system is a collection of computerized tools used to monitor control optimize the performance of a generation and transmission systems this intelligent energy management software control system is designed to reduce energy consumption improve the utilization of the system increase reliability and predict electrical system performs as well as optimize energy usage to reduce cost okay and this application use the real time data such as a frequency actual generation tile and load flows and plant units controller status to provide system changes also and operate economically as a possible record that the characters of all generating units be available in one location so that the most efficient units could be dispatched properly along with the less efficient objectives are security and stability of the system economic operation and control and third optimization operation planning and maintenance scheduling these are the main aspect main objectives of the system something the evolution of the scada since the remote control the 1890s only the remote control and remote indication is started and the telecommand control on 1920 started and 1930 check before operate cvs systems based on the electro mechanical technology introduced in 1960 only supervisory control system the remote control and status indication started in 1960 data acquisitioning gaming popularity dis scada came into being and 1980s load dispatch centers and control center and 1990 energy control centers established and energy management systems implemented on 2000 2000s only and 2015 onwards only they implemented the now uh, onwards the phasor measurement units now we now it only the fully coming on that and functions of benefits ems control functions operative functions and optimization functions and planning functions the control functions sir these are things are already discussed everything and the important functions can i say data aggregation information display supervisory control alarm processing information storage and reports and sequence of event acquisition data calculation special rtu processing and control these are the ems scada system this is the ems scada components and structure of the ems scada system power systems first is first is a power system and second is the scada system and the energy management system is the control operators things this is the components of the ems scada system and the structure of the scada system the power system scada with the uh, we have to monitor all those things Bo both ways we are going to transfer and manage the real time operators this is a scada architecture independent control center and the corporate land via we getting all the data to the communication if there any communication failures we are going to uh, operate is a difficult in the real time operations the importance of the ems scada system scada monitors information from the power system through ptct how the scada data received through ptct pt is a potential transformer and ct is a current transformer sir. and voltage data uh, collects the data and sends them to the energy management system both analog data digital informations are collected by the remote terminal units ems consists of a network of a computers or workstations which perform computational tasks for decision making in real time operation and control both online and offline functions can be performed in an energy management system the operators in an energy management system send the signals to the power system through scada online functions include mainly closed loop control functions like automatic generation control loop load frequency control voltage reactive frequency control open loop functions like economic dispatch Uh, and uh, operator load flow state estimation security assessment etc are also performed in real time as on line functions what are the working functions of the energy management system real time monitoring the control of the whole distribution network enhanced the customer service through the complete outage management package and efficient working handling and better crew and resource management optimal network utilization by the state estimator functionality better support for all reporting with retrieval of historical data or should be a data warehouse conclusion 
SCADA has a many applications in various disciplines for monitoring and control in real time. Applications of SCADA for real time control of your power network is a challenge and subsequent section describe the design and development of a SCADA system for computerized monitoring and control of your power system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, any questions regarding on that? Sir, I have a general question, sir. Oh, tell me, Ma. Uh, sir, uh, how, uh, how to become an assistant engineer, sir? Is there any exam, sir? Yes, madam. A lot of exams are there. Uh, in a state sector side, state sector side, they have to conduct in, every year once they conduct one examination. State uh, Tanjetko has also right now also started uh, already uh, called for in last year during COVID only that uh, that right now it's not that yet to be the way to play uh, uh, started that uh, uh, exam examination process it to be start the examination process. How to prepare for that, sir? Based based on your basics electrical what what you studied in that uh, education and a uh, lot of subjects uh, right now uh, power system control and. Uh, power system operation control and uh, control system and uh, circuit theory, field theory and uh, what are the things, um, unit commitment, lot of things are studied based on the real time uh, what you are studied in the UG, that things are also coming under that, uh, the questions patterns are there. Okay, sir. Sure. Another things also I have to tell you, lot of things. Sir. In Indian engineering service, job opportunities also there. In power yes, gate, sir. you have to prepare gate examination. Based on the gate examination preparation is a uh, best way at least for that this thing. In state sector side, everyone I think uh, everybody has aware about the gate examination portions. I think. Yes sir. Yes sir. Uh, in same syllabus only is applicable to on that in state sector. Yes, it is very yes, much useful to you. Okay. And then a lot of job or job opportunities are coming in for future. Uh, because more renewable power going to be implemented, more renewable power. So in this perspective, lot of opportunities are coming in private sectors. So and in central perspective and state perspective, and a lot of lot of job opportunities are there. Uh, just like that, in Indian engineering service, a lot of them are known about the Indian administrative services. Ah, yes. Want, ah, yes. In the same thing, engineering side on side also there. Indian Engineering Services. IES examination. Uh, IES examination. If you pass with the Indian Engineering Service, you are going to appoint in the Central Electricity Authority on Power Grid Corporation. Uh, they have they are going to you are going to be placed on that place. First of first post is the assistant executive. Right now I am at the after 12 years only I am getting this post uh, assistant executive engineer. But if you pass with that uh, Indian Engineering Service, you are directly you are going to appoint as an assistant executive engineer. Yes, sir. It is a very, uh, very good post to everyone. So it's and qualifications just UG? UG, UG, UG only is the eligible course, yes. Okay, so we can start preparing from our first year as well for uh, that exams or after completing four years we want to... No, no, now, now also you also start from first year also you have to start, there is no problem. Based on the IES preparation only, based on that only as a general, uh, general, first uh, general topics and then mathematics and physics and, the, uh, and the, uh, our, our, core, our core subject. Core subject is the electrical. Electrical measure only you're going to take. Suppose you are going to see work, uh, you're studying electronics. So your uh, core subject is electronics and communications perspective, communication. And mechanical, mechanical is the core subject. And civil, you have to take it in the uh, civil. And everything is there, mechanical and also everything. Core subject is also there. Be, same thing in the IAS. IAS particular the core subjects are the most important. If I ask particular, I put a Tamil plan in a Gateria and a Tamil and a Nala Pesavero and a Tamil Nala Terio and a Gay and a Gilekim Nala Terio in a Tulkopin Latino, Tirukur and Alatri, Elamitrio. So upon a Tamil Elamudima, Abdina, yes, it is possible. I Elamudio, Tamil Apache, Tamil Matumi, Eldi, IS Agamudio. Ade Pola, engineer Sri, Ade Pulagodima, Agamudi Nasa, civil Nasa Patrika, and Apanamudima, Panamudio. Information of Patrika, Panamudima, Panamudio. Other on the course of Jita Kotabriana, IES Lang on the lot of features Kuturkranga. And the features and General subjects physics, chemistry, biology, and mass general knowledge. General knowledge of the EPK, past ten years, the economic growth of the 
அப்புறமேட்டு அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் க்ரோத் எப்படி இருக்கு இண்டஸ்ட்ரியல் க்ரோத் எப்படி இருக்கு அப்புறம் கமர்ஷியல் எப்படி நம்ம போயிட்டு இருக்கோம் பாப்புலேஷன் க்ரோத் எப்படி இருக்கு ஸோ அப்போ என்னென்ன டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் வந்து ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் ஃபேஸ் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்கிறோம் அதெல்லாம் எப்படி ஹவு டு ஓவர் கம் தட் இஷ்யூ ஹவு த ஸ்டேட் செக்டர் சைடு ஆக்ட் ஹவு த சென்ட்ரல் செக்டர் சைடு ஆக்ட் ஸோ இது எல்லாத்தையும் நம்ம பார்க்கும் பொழுது இது எல்லாமே வந்து ஜென்ரல் நாலேஜ் ஸோ ஈச் அண்ட் எவ்ரி டே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு லேர்ன் த ஃப்ரம் பேப்பர் நியூஸ் பேப்பர் இட் செல்ஃப் அண்ட் ரைட் நவ் வி ஹேட் அவைலபிள் இந்த மீடியா இது நம்ம டேப் இட் செல்ஃப் இஸ் சார் மொபைல் இட் செல்ஃப் இஸ் சார் இப்போ டெய்லியும் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா நீங்கள் கூகுளில் போய்ட்டு ஜஸ்ட் கூகுளில் போய் நீங்கள் சர்ச் பண்ணுவாங்க ஜஸ்ட் கூகுள் க்ரோம் அப்படி கிளிக் பண்ணிட்டு உள்ள போய் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா டெய்லியும் அப்டேட்ஸ் போட்டுகிட்டே இருப்பாங்க இப்ப பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு ஆக்சுவலா ஒரு ஸ்லைட் போட்டு ஆக்சுவலா ஃபோர் 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 ஃபிஃப்டி கிகா வாட்ஸ் வந்து சொல்லிருக்கேன்னா பிஎம் வந்து லேட்டஸ்ட் ஒரு அப்டேட்டேஷன் வந்து சொல்லியிருக்கா இந்த மாதிரி பண்ணணும் அப்படிங்கிறது ஒரு டார்கெட் கொடுத்துருக்காரு ஆக்சுவலா ப்ரீவியஸ் வந்து ஒரு டார்கெட் வந்து கொடுத்துருந்தா டூ ஃபிஃப்டி கிகா வாட்ஸ் அப்படின்னாரு அப்புறம் டூ ஃபிஃப்டி கிகா அப்புறம் ஃபோர் ஹண்ட்ரட் கிகா வாட்ஸ் அப்ப எப்படி சோ அப்ப எவ்வளவு மேனேஜ் பண்ண முடியும் அப்படிங்கறத நம்ம தெரிஞ்சுக்க முடியும் த்ரூ நியூஸ் பேப்பர் த்ரூ மீடியா அப்ப இதெல்லாம் நம்ம பார்க்கும் பொழுது இதுதான் ஜென்ரல் அவேர்னஸா வந்து கொஸ்டினிங் கேட்கறாங்க ஒண்ணு மேத்தமெட்டிக்ஸ் சைடு கொஸ்டினிங் ரீசனிங் இதை வந்து ஜென்ரல் நாலேஜ் ஸோ சப்ஜெக்ட் வயசுல போறோம் அப்போ எலக்ட்ரிக்கல் எலக்ட்ரிக்கல் நான் படிச்சிருக்கேன் சார் அப்போ என்னென்ன சப்ஜெக்ட் எல்லாம் கேட்பாங்க அப்போ சர்க்கியூட் தேரி கேட்பாங்க ஃபீல்டு ஃபீல்டு பவர் சிஸ்டம் டைனமிக்ஸ் கேட்பாங்க அப்புறம் பவர் சிஸ்டம் ஆப்ரேஷன் கண்ட்ரோல் கேட்பாங்க ஸோ அப்போ அப்புறம் கண்ட்ரோல் சிஸ்டம் கேட்பாங்க ஸோ இதுல எல்லாம் வந்து நம்ம பேசிக்ஸா படிச்சிருப்போம் நம்ம சப்ஜெக்ட் என்ன நம்ம படிச்சிருக்கிறோமோ அதை தான் வந்து அங்கே கேட்கறாங்க அங்கே வந்து வேற டிஃப்ரெண்ட் மெத்தடாலஜில கேட்பாங்க அந்த மெத்தடாலஜியில நம்ம ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபாலோ பண்ணிட்டோமா ஈஸியா நம்ம வந்துட்டு அந்த கேட் எக்ஸாம் நம்ம பாஸ் பண்ணலாம் கேட் எக்ஸாம் பாஸ் பண்ணிட்டீங்கனாவே ஈஸிலி யூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு போஸ்ட் அடி இதுல என்ன பண்ணலாம் என்டிபிசி போகலாம் நேஷனல் தெர்மல் பவர் கார்பரேஷன் போய் ஜாயின் பண்ண முடியும் அப்புறம் நேஷனல் ஹைட்ரோ பவர் கார்பரேஷன் லிமிடெட் ஜாயின் பண்ண முடியும் நியூக்ளியர் பவர் கார்பரேஷன் லிமிடெட் ஜாயின் பண்ண முடியும் பாரத் ஹெவி எலக்ட்ரிகல் லிமிடெட் ஜாயின் பண்ண முடியும் அப்புறம் சென்ட்ரல் எலக்ட்ரிசிட்டி அத்தாரிட்டி மினிஸ்டர் பவர்ல ஏதோ போஸ்ட் கால் ஃபார் பண்ண முடியும் கேட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் பேஸ் பண்ணி தான் இப்போ நிறைய எடுத்துறாங்க அப்புறம் நெய்வேலி லிக்னெட் கார்பரேஷன் நமக்கு தமிழ்நாட்டில் இருக்கு ஸோ அவங்களோட இதுலேயும் நம்ம போய் ஜாயின் பண்ண முடியும் கேட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் மேஜர் இதாக இதாக இருக்கு இப்போ எப்படி கேட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் இப்போ எக்ஸாம்பிளுக்கு வந்து இப்போ லெக்சராக போகணும் அப்படின்னா போஸ்ட் கிராஜுவேட் முடிச்சிருக்கணும் அவங்க வந்து ஸ்லெட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் ஸ்டேட் லெவல் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் பாஸ் பண்ணிருக்கணும் அப்படின்னு இருக்காங்க ஸோ அதே போல இன்ஜினியரிங் பெர்ஸ்பெக்டிவ்ல வந்துட்டு நான் வந்து ஒரு இது போகணும் அப்படின்னு இது பண்ணா கேட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் பாஸ் பண்ணணும் பாஸ் பண்ணுமா நம்ம அது போலாம் ஸோ கேட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் நான் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணிட்டேன் சார் சார் எலிஜிபிள் டு ரைட் த ஐஇஎஸ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் எஸ் டெஃபினெட்லி யூ ஆர் தி எலிஜிபிள் பர்சன் கண்டிப்பா உங்களால முடியும் ஸோ அப்ப நான் என்ன சார் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னா கேட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் என்னென்ன ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணீங்களோ அதை இன்னும் கொஞ்சம் டீப்பா அனலைஸ் பண்ணிட்டு அந்த ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் கொண்டு பை ஐஎஸ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் எவ்ரி இயர் தே ஆர் கோயிங் டு கண்டக்ட் திஸ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் ஸோ ஈஸிலி கெட் த போஸ்ட் நீங்க ஐஎஸ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் பாஸ் பண்ணிட்டீங்கன்னா இமிடியட்லி யூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு அப்பாயிண்டட் அஸ் அசிஸ்டன்ட் எக்ஸிகூட்டிவ் இன்ஜினியர் ங்கிறது சாதனமல்ல அண்ட் அசிஸ்டன்ட் எக்ஸிகூட்டிவ் போஸ்ட் எடுத்த உடனே போடும் பொழுது உங்களுக்கு யூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு ஏர்ன் ஒன் லேக் டூ ஒன் லேக் ஃபிஃப்டி தௌசண்ட் ருபீஸ் சேலரி சாதாரணமாக கிடைக்கும் டெஃபினட்டாக இட் இஸ் ஈஸிலி கம்பேர்ட் டு தட் சாஃப்ட்வேர் சாஃப்ட்வேர் இன்ஜினியர் போனால் கூட என்ன பண்ணுவோம் நீங்கள் கம்ப்யூட்டர் அப்புறம் இன்ஷியல் ஒரு தேர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் தௌசண்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ப்ரீவியஸ்லாம் இப்போ பிஃபோர் டூ தௌசண்ட் டூ தௌசண்ட் ஃபைவ்லாம் பார்த்தா லாட் ஆஃப் அமெரிக்கன் இப்போ சாஃப்ட்வேர் சைடு இப்போ எலக்ட்ரிக்கல் இன்ஜினியர் வந்து என்ன பண்ண முடியும் சாஃப்ட்வேர் சைடு லேன் பண்ணி சாஃப்ட்வேர் லேனிங் இது பண்ண முடியும் ப்ரூவ் பண்ண முடியும் பட் சாஃப்ட்வேர் சைடு மட்டும் படிக்கிறவங்க என்ன பண்ண முடியும் சாஃப்ட்வேர் சைடில் மட்டும் தான் இன்ஜினியர் பண்ண முடியும் அதில் வந்து டெவலப் பண்ண நம்ம சொல்ல சொல்லும் போது அவங்க கேட்டு அதில் டெவலப் பண்ண முடியும் ஸோ அப்போ எலக்ட்ரிக்கல் இஸ் த பேஸ் சப்ஜெக்ட் அண்ட் மெக்கானிக்கல்ல மெக்கானிக்கல் பேஸ் சப்ஜெக்ட் சிவில் இஸ் த பேஸ் சப்ஜெக்ட் ஸோ இப்போ எலக்ட்ரிக்கல் இன்ஜினியர் அப்படின்னு சொல்லும் போது பெரிய இதாக இருக்கும் அது எலக்ட்ரானிக்ஸ் கம்யூனிகேஷன் அப்படிங்கும் போது ஒரு நம்ம வந்து டெத்தாக சொல்ல முடியும் ஸோ அப்போ நம்ம இதெல்லாம் பண்ணிட்டோமா பேஸ் சப்ஜெக்ட் படிச்சிடமா நம்ம வே என்ன 
ஓகே அப்புறம் ரெனியூபிள் செக்டர் இம்ப்ளிமெண்ட் பண்றதுனால உங்களுக்கு பொல்யூஷன் ஃப்ரீ ஆகுது ஸோ பொல்யூஷன் ஃப்ரீ இப்போ எடுத்துக்காட்டுக்கு சிம்பிளா சொல்லணும்னா இந்த கோவிட் நைன்டீன் அப்படிங்கிறது வந்ததுக்கு அப்புறம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா நம்ம பொல்யூஷன் பாஸ்ட் தேர்ட்டி இயர்ஸ்க்கு முன்னால என்ன பொல்யூஷன் இருந்துச்சோ அந்த அளவுக்கு ரெக்கார்டா இருக்கும் தேர்ட்டி இயர்ஸ்க்கு முன்னால பொல்யூஷன் ஃப்ரீயா இருந்துச்சு தேர்ட்டி டு ஃபார்ட்டி இயர்ஸ்க்கு பிஃபோர் அப்ப அந்த இதுக்கு பொல்யூஷன் ஃப்ரீயா இருக்கு எக்ஸாம்பிள் வந்து ஜஸ்ட் நீங்க கிளவுட் வாட்ச் பண்ணீங்கன்னா ஸ்கை வாட்ச் பண்ணீங்கன்னா பார்த்து மோர் கிளவுட்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் பட் பிஃபோர் கோவிட் நீங்க பாத்துருந்தா தெரியும் எங்க கிளவுட்ஸ் எங்க காணமே அப்படிங்கறத பாத்துருப்பீங்க கிளியர் ஸ்கையா தான் இருந்திருக்கும் அரே ஓவர் ஆஃப் தட் ஆமா இப்ப பாத்தீங்கன்னா தெரியும் அப்ப கிளைமேட்டே வந்து கிளியரா இருக்கு சோ அப்ப இது கண்டிஷனை அப்படியே இம்ப்ளிமெண்ட் பண்ணிட்டு கொண்டுட்டு போனோமா நம்ம என்வரன்மெண்ட்ல வந்து என்ன பண்ணலாம் நம்ம சேவ் பண்ணிடலாம் சோ அப்ப ஓசோன் வந்து படலம் அந்த இதா ஹோல்ஸ் இருக்கு அப்படின்னாங்க சோ அந்த ஹோல்சோன் வந்து இப்ப வந்து கொஞ்சம் இத ரெஸ்டோர் ஆயிருக்கு அப்படின்னாங்க சோ அந்த ஓசோன் ரெஸ்டோரேஷன் ஆல்சோ ஆஃப்டர் இம்ப்ளிமெண்டிங் தூல் ரெனிவோல் பவர் போது என்ன ஆகும் நமக்கு ஓசோன் ஆல்சோ நம்ம சேவ் பண்ணிருக்கிறோம் என்வரன்மெண்ட்ல சேவ் பண்ணிருக்கிறோம் சோ இன் திஸ் பெர்ஸ்பெக்டிவ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு ஹெல்ப் த நேஷன் ஹெல்ப் த country nation nature okay ingla so and then any questions from others thank you sir thank you thank you and others any very questions anything want please feel free to ask me balamurugan sargunan yes sandil uh, sir ah yes sir yes sir okay sir okay sir any questions yes, sir. Sir, anything anything uh, they are asking yes sir i think uh, uh, students question is over okay sir. if anybody want they can unmute otherwise uh, thank you so much i think uh, uh, you have given an uh, a lots of uh, 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 insight about this renewable and uh, power grid system definitely i think uh, Uh, there is a huge amount of knowledge shared almost two hours i think uh, uh, people were interacting with you so it's a great honor that uh, institute of engineers and ashago solution delighted uh, to see you as a speaker for the session and um, i think uh, no other further move i think uh, we can end up i think sir there are students are appreciating your session for this informative uh, one okay sir thank you thank you thank you sir thank you to everyone sir thank you thanks for giving me the wonderful opportunity for deliver that uh, low dispatch activities in the real time conditions on today thank you yes sir thank you so much sir. thank you ah thank you